What's up, YouTube? Erod two and two here with another episode of the Back Nine. So, what are we going to talk about today? Today, we're going to talk about easiest independent books that can be optioned to either series or movies or anything else. Good topic. We've seen so many different things like Hellboy, which were optioned, and so many other programs that were optioned. And they cut. Look, Umbrella Academy is probably one of the best examples of an indie book. That was a big success. The Boys was another one. So these independent books actually turn out to be pretty good TV series. Uh, What's well, the other one? Uh, Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass is another one. You had, you had two movies out of that. Almost had three movies out of Kick-Ass. So just good stuff. Before we start this, I just want to give a shout out to my man Ben C. from CBSI. If you haven't checked out that website, go check out that website because it's fantastic. And they do a, lot, a great job over there. Also, big shout out to my man Phil from Vintage Comics Toys um, for setting this all up and, and, you know, creating this list and coming up with these topics. It's hard to come up with a different topic all the time. These guys are nailing it continuously. And you know what? Suggestion you guys, if you have a topic that you would like to see, leave a comment and let me know. And I'll pass it on to the guys at CBSI. Maybe they can do that. We can see, get something that you guys are interested in also. All right. But you know what? Let's get started with this one here now, and let's take a look at what uh, my man Phil has to say here. So Phil says, we are doing the easiest indies to be optioned for the back nine this week. Usually every year there's an indie comic that comes out of nowhere and ignite the comic market across the board. The most common trigger is the possibility of a comic to be optioned. And last year, more comics than usual got picked up by a studio. This clouds the possibilities for this year because it narrows down the the field, but our panel back, took on the challenge to select the indie comic series that was free from the picking and were focused on creators and did not have an exclusive deal with the studio. As always, feel free to drop your suggestions for easiest indies to be optioned. And you know what? Let's go straight into the first one and see what they went with. So the first one is by Jack Kornblatt, so it's going to be a good one. And he went with Resistance, number one. It is way easier for a writer to get something optioned if they've already had Hollywood connections. As the creator and writer for both Sense8 and Babylon 5, JMS's uh, connections run pretty deep. And that's John Michael Straczynski. Uh, so, when they combine, so when you combine that with his suburb writing style and a great project like The Resistance, the result is an investment opportunity more, more people should be talking about. Good pick. I'm not familiar with this book, but uh, it's always something, like I said, and like I said, Jack always has fantastic picks. So just another book that you might want to go out there and, and do some research on. Because like uh, like the video game book, you know, some Gears of War and all of those things, some of those series are taken off. I've heard the Halo series is actually pretty good. Um, so, you know, it, it could be, you know, the indie books are another way to go where you can get some really good spec picks. And now uh, Peter Renner goes with slots number one. This is the second print for issue one, but I really dig the cover. You'd make a good little limited. You'd make a good little limited series on Netflix or something like that. Just a good street level crime set in Vegas or Reno. I can't remember which. I like the second print for issue one. If you were to invest, a uh, book I'm not familiar with at all. If anybody's read it, because I'll probably just put it on my to to do list as far as reading. Let me know what you guys think of that pick because uh, Peter Renner, again, another guy who does a fantastic job. If you're not following his channel, check out Renovision on YouTube because his spec stuff is fantastic, something I watch all the time. And now we're going to go with Steve Horn, who goes with a, a, a fantastic series, uh, Southern Bastards. Southern Bastards could run on a low budget, but the title could offend people. So they have to change the title of the show if they adapt it. And if you have not read Southern Bastards, uh, it's a good read. Uh, deals with racism and, and, and a lot of other topics. Uh, kind of rough. It would definitely need to be that um, mature type of audience if they do it the way it's supposed to be done. But um, I, I liked it a lot. It went into like two different story arcs. The first story arc was really, really good. I mean, if you have movies like Django that, that was successful – a show like Southern Bastards, I think, is another series that could be successful. And now we're going to go with Mighty Mel V, another book I read and loved. 
is nail biter. Uh, this crazy story should have been a t uh, should have been on TV. I've been wanting this for years. Blacklist was a hit TV show, and this one can give a pretty good spin with a similar plot where the bad guy helps the G man, except that the bad guy is insane in this one. Uh, good good read. If you haven't read that, pick it up. That easily transcribes into an HBO Max or a Showtime type of series. Uh, a la kind of Dexter-ish, but with them helping the police, whereas Dexter worked for the police department. Uh, now, Walker goes with uh, another classic, and that's Chew. I wish Chew and Thief of Thieves would have moved forward. Crazy how the man for Chew refuses to die. It hasn't stopped hovering around the $300 mark. The fan base is still rather large for the comic series. You know what? Chew, if you guys have not read that, is an amazing read. And uh, basically the guy uh, becomes a carnivore type of thing where if he eats flesh, he can read that person's thoughts and find out things. And he's a detective. So during investigations, takes a bite, finds out how a person died and, and uh, just all kinds of crazy stuff like that. During that time frame, um, Image was putting out some great, great independent stuff. They started again. They kind of, they kind of like glow, go in ebbs and flows. But they were doing this, and they were doing uh, Peter Pan's A Force, which is basically Peter Pan, but during World War II. If you haven't had a chance to read that, take a look at that. Of course, you had The Walking Dead and all these other books coming out. I Image was killing it for a while there, and I'm glad to see that uh, some of these other companies are doing it now, too. It's always fun. Indie reads are always the best reads as far as stories are concerned, especially if you don't want to just read about superheroes. Uh, give the indie books a look at and now we're going to see that uh, Chris Helms goes with War Corns. War Corns is a very long shot, but with the success of Rick and Morty and the underground brony culture, so why not a bunch of military unicorns? Hmm. Never heard of this? Probably, like he said, a long shot, but military unicorns. You could see, you could see something uh, like... Uh, you know, Rooster Teeth or some company like that that does all of these uh, claymation stuff, you know, maybe picking up a series like this somewhere down the line. And now Van Demby goes with a great, great read. Uh, if you have not read this, you must read this. And that's Manifest Destiny. The alternative history of the travels of Lou and Clark, Lewis and Clark was a story I became attached to immediately. Dignus and Roberts built a beautiful backdrop of early America. The story is a slow burn, but the payoff has been excellent. Running close to 50 issues, this series could play out incredibly well on a series. I couldn't agree more. You're talking about Lewis and Clark adventure and monsters and uh, alien plants. and It just has everything that would just... It's kind of like Land of the Lost, but with history involved in it. Uh, I think that's the best way to put it. Uh, definitely a good read would turn into a great series. I, I think you could probably get more than one season out of that too. It, it was that good. And now uh, Adam is going to go with Monstrous number one. In 2019, all I see is a lot of false rumor sites referencing each other and a few places saying it was false that it was picked up by HBO. At the very least, publicly, this comic series has not been picked up from what I am seeing. Please reference the good advice in the link below from our good friends at Cover Price. I really like the upside of Monstrance for a show or a movie. Uh, I did not read Monstrance, but I heard it was a very, very good read. Uh, fantastic cover arts. Um, so, uh, you know what? Uh, probably could transcribe easily into a series. And now my man Phil goes with Punk Rock Jesus. Has there ever been a show that had a clone of Jesus? Punk Rock Jesus is not really uh, uh, my wheelhouse, but it seems easy to adapt if done the right way. And Vertical can make it to... Make it to any studio. It seems a show would speak to a lot of what's going on right now with politics, religion, and who doesn't like the punk rock vibe to draw the different uh, viewership. Read the comic series, said, and I think you would think this story could give a fresh take on the current climate of po politics and the real world. You know what? That's, that's an interesting pick, Phil. Um, I remember when Punk Rock Jesus came out, it was not a title that I was reading. But um, it, it had a lot of buzz to it. A lot of people were looking at it. Now, um, if I had to pick, uh, the series I picked 
was one of the series I picked was already optioned. Um, but I don't believe this series was optioned. And if it has, please let me know because this is my pick. And it's, it's a, a story that I, I really, really enjoy. Had a lot of buzz. Um, it came out right around the same time that Something is Killing the Children came out, which has been optioned by Netflix, I believe it is. But I'm going to go with Department of Truth number one. And that's uh, one of my favorite reads when it comes uh, when it come, came out. This book will transfer easily over to a streaming service series. It has all the elements people love. Conspiracy theories, covert government agency, and characters that will shock someone who hasn't, who hasn't read this. It should be a very popular. It should be very popular with non-comic book viewers as well as comic readers. Um, like I said, I when you have those series that, that take off well, and I, I again reference the boys on Umbrella Academy because they're the two big successes. People that are non-comic book readers see these series and love them for what they are, love the characters, fall in love with the stories. That's the the ones that are really successful because now you're drawing in people that don't want don't read comics, and it's not just the comic readers. So, I mean, that's it. Let me know what you guys think of this video. Let me know what picks you guys would have picked. If you agree with the picks, don't disagree. Uh, leave comments below, and I will get back to you guys. I'm almost at 4,300 subs, so I want to appreciate uh, and thank you and say thank you to everybody who subbed up. If you haven't subbed up, please sub up. Hit the thumbs up. Help with the algorithm. And until my next video, peace.